Hello, it's good to see each of you today, in sort of a sense. We've had a blessed day today. We've had two wonderful services at Macedonia and Twin Branch United Methodist Church. We've also taken our children and the young people and the ones like myself that are not so young anymore, and we enjoyed a wonderful time at the pumpkin patch. What a blessed day, and it's so beautiful today. And it's also beautiful to be able to share the Lord Jesus Christ with you. We'll be much in prayer for everything that we're doing. And uh, I miss you all. And I look forward to seeing you all again as soon as this COVID-19 pandemic has passed. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer, shall we? Father, thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. Be with my family in Christ at home. Be with those, Lord, who have come today seeking a blessing from your word. And Lord, as we search the scriptures, we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that you will supply mightily through the song and Lord, through the message. May each person out there be blessed. May they experience your love and your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. And where two or three are gathered in your name, you're in the midst. We praise you. And we thank you for this time together once again and pray that the message, the words spoken during it, would be your words for us today. For we ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I'm going to do a song for you now. Soon this life will end And I'll hear a sweet sound Saying, child, enter in Burned the ground. I don't deserve His mercy and grace. For there's one thing I'll do when I see His sweet face. I'll lay my crown at the Master's feet. Then I'll bow down While all nations crown him King of all kings I'll shout hallelujah My joy is complete When I lay my crown At the Master's feet The good things I've done they seem little to me For if not for his love I know where I'd be So lost without hope No future in view For when I see my Lord There's something I have to do I'll lay my crown at the Master's feet. Then I'll bow down while nations crown him King of all kings. I'll shout hallelujah, my joy is complete when I lay my crown. At the Master's feet well, I'll shout hallelujah My joy is complete When I lay my crown At the Master's feet I'll be reading today from the Gospel of Luke Chapter 8, verses 37 through 40. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went back to his ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. 
And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. That's God's word for his people. We have an account here of a man who had been demon-possessed, totally under the control of Satan. What a sight he must have been, as he would tear chains. They would try to bind him. It didn't do any good. And when they would try it, he would just break from them easily. One thing to remember, Satan may be powerful, but we serve a God that is much more powerful. When Jesus had an encounter with this man, he simply asked a question of him, what his name was, that being to the devils, and they gave their name as being legion, for they were many. And so Jesus had absolute authority over those devils. At the last part, I'll not go into every detail because the message today is about home and a ministry from home. But the last account we have of this man, though we don't know his name nor know a lot about him, he was clothed, he was calm, and he was in his right mind, and he was at the feet of Jesus. My friends, that's a place you and I need to be. The only way we can find serenity in our lives, the only way that we can have absolute peace, is to trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. This man was so grateful for what Jesus had done for him that he wanted to stay with Jesus. He wanted to walk and go everywhere with Jesus. But Jesus, rather than having him go walk with him everywhere, instead sent him home. Have you ever wondered why Jesus sent him home? Well, I've thought about that in this message. First thing is, is that at home, that's the first frontier of the Christian life. Your family, your, those closest to you, know everything about you. There was no doubt that this man was absolutely sincere in his newfound faith. Here he was separated from his family. Here he was living in the graveyard. Here he was a terror to all who would come near. And the Lord had made him whole again. He was now in his right mind. He could be with his family. He could once again have fellowship. We're not told exactly how old he is. We're not told a lot of things, but he may have had a wife and children. He may have had a mother and father to return home to, and now they could all rejoice with him. And he was told to go there, to go home. One thing's for certain, although we may put on our best face for Sunday morning, or even when we go to our jobs, our family knows everything about us. They know every little detail. My wife is one who has helped me be a better person. She has helped me to realize the needs of people around me, including my own two sons and my lovely stepdaughter, each one of them with needs. And she's always watching and she notices things happening in the church. I'm so glad that she helps me to be a better person. That's what family does for us. One thing I know about her, she's a real Christian. And I believe she can say the same thing about myself. That person that we are at two o'clock in the morning calling out to the Lord, that's the person we need to be on Sunday mornings. That's the person we need to be every day of our life. One thing's for certain, and you know this, people who are standing on the truth, and by the way, Jesus Christ is the truth. If we're always letting truth be part of our vocabulary, being part of who we are, then we're not having to come up with other schemes and other devices along the way. The truth will always stand, and Jesus Christ is that truth. You know, some of the examples of people in the home that trusted uh, and wanted the family to be involved were as follows. One was Noah. He won his family to the Lord, and they all were in the ark with him and they were all saved by the hand of God. Also, too, there was Cornelius, and he had ample time to gather people together so that they could hear the apostle Peter as he proclaimed Jesus Christ, and they could become part of the household of faith. The Philippian jailer, for example, 
And in him, he was told this, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy household. And also too, there are other examples. Joshua, for example, said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm so thankful that family is so instrumental in all that we're doing. I live in a wonderful neighborhood, great neighbors, and I love each of them. And they and couldn't ask for a better place to live. But you know, they know me as well, and your neighbors know you as well, and your family knows you as well. My prayer for each one listening today is that you be the best you you can be and realize that you're not perfect, but that God is still working in you. He can change you into that person that he desires, and he can use you at your home. Sometimes we think a ministry has to be to a far land, or we may think we're being called to get moved to another area of the state to ministry. But every one of us have this responsibility to share Christ right where we are because people know us. They knew the person we were before and they now see the person we've become. Quite frankly, this person that was so demon possessed and now was sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, so much reminds me of what we were without Christ. We were so undone and we needed Jesus ourselves. And how precious, precious it is that he would offer his hand to us and offer us his amazing grace so that we can be saved. Be a worker, be a doer of the word, even at home. Also, too, another thought is, is that home is a place to tell of all the good things. This man went back and forth and told all of his neighbors what he had done. Jesus told him, show those things that God has done for you. Do loved ones see you as that genuine Christian? Do they see you as a gentle person or do they see you as someone that's not so genuine? Do they see you as a uh, person who is praising or do they see you as a person who's pouting? Are you looking for the best in others or are you looking for the worst? Your family sees these things. And you realize the, the person that you are at home is who you really, really are. Listen to your family. Pray for your family. Be that Christian in front of your family and in front of your neighbors and your workforce. And you'll see what Jesus can do in your life too. And also, home is the outpost for outreach for Jesus Christ. This man simply went his way and told everyone what Jesus had done for him. That's all he did. And when Jesus came back, you see, I read one verse at the beginning that said they wanted him to leave. They were so terrified by this man. They were so terrified that they had watched demons come out of this man. They were so terrified that those demons entered into the swine and went into the water and choked to death. Perhaps it was some of those that raised the swine and they were upset because there went their living. But when this man shared his faith everywhere he went to the Gadarenes, when he came back again, they were waiting for him and receiving him, all because of this man's faith. I think about the woman at the well that Jesus encountered, and just because of her faith, just because a man had told her everything about her, she knew he was the Messiah. And she shared her faith everywhere. And then the people said to her later, after they came and saw Jesus for himself, said, now we believe, not just because of you, but because we've witnessed ourselves and believe that he's the Christ. You'd be surprised what Jesus can do at home for you. Neighborhoods should be evangelized. Workplaces, evangelized. Every time we make a turn, there's an opportunity to tell others about Jesus. Your home can be an outpost. You know, I was thinking quite frankly about home and I was thinking about the way that it was many years ago. And I've got some friends maybe viewing from Pike County. I still count that as my early home. And you know, there are so many people there that I love so much, but I love going back and seeing my dad and, and seeing my family because in going there, it just reminds me of a simpler time. But I'm also reminded too that in this life, 
there was a time that I'm, I'm a pilgrim right now, but there's coming a time when I'm going to my heavenly home. I don't think it's too far in the distant future, but I'll tell you one thing. Whenever my time is there and it's my time to be with the Lord, one thing I do know, being with the Lord is far better from here. What a homecoming that will be, being with Jesus forever and ever. I pray that this week that you just find contentment in those things that are around you and where God has placed you and that you feel his love every turn and that you feel his presence in every area of your life. He loves you so much. He's good. God is good all the time. And the people would say, and all the time, God is good. Let us pray, and I just trust that God will be with you in everything. Dear Father, be with my friends at home, my family. Help them, Lord, through this time. We miss them so much. And just lift them up. Give them, Lord, just a real knowledge of your working in their hearts. And Lord, may we also too make our homes into outreach posts for you. We're going to be praising you, Lord, for everything that you do. We pray, Lord, that your very presence would be so strong in our lives that others would witness the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All these things we ask in Jesus' most wonderful and precious name. Amen.